the center. Nope. Oh, okay, a little more over. That's perfect. We're just going to open up with a moment of prayer, uh, as we usually do, and then we go right into the Bible study. So we give God praise and thanks for his goodness towards us. Amen. Amen. Um, I thank God. Let's open up in prayer and then we go into the Bible study tonight. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you for your mercy and your goodness towards us and that you have given us life. We bless you as the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for this day, the day which you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We bless you because it was because of your faithfulness towards us while we are still here in the land of the living. Uh, Jeremiah said that your faithfulness, your mercies is renewed each and every single morning. And because of this mercy, it is why we can open up our mouth and give you praise and honor because out of your hands we eat. Out of you are Jehovah Jireh, you are Jehovah Nisi, you are the God who covers us, you are our God who is our peace, Jehovah Shalom. You are the God who is Jehovah Shalom, you're the God who is here, there, and everywhere. You're the omnipresent God, and we bless you and we thank you because of this new year. We're a year that we did not deserve, and because we did not deserve it, we look to you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to you as the God who says in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man who opens up unto me, behold, I come in and sup with him. So we thank you that you did open up. We open up unto you, and because we open up unto you, you have partake with us. We sit at the table that you prepared for us. And we, as we sit at this table, you prepare that mercy and grace be with us. We pray for every single person in this room tonight that your mercy will be with them, that your goodness, the peace of God, the shalom of God will be upon them. We pray for their families. We pray for their individual homes. We pray for their children and their grandchildren. We pray for every single congregant of this church. That God, the mercy of God will flow wherever they are. That the connected pieces of their lives, wherever they feel as if it's falling apart, wherever they may be sick, wherever they may be in a hospice, wherever they may be in a hospital bed, wherever they may be at home, wherever they may be at work, wherever they may be with friends, wherever they may be with families, that even now, you will meet them and their minds will be on you because you said great peace have they whose mind is stayed on you. We pray for this community that you will touch this community of Weeksville, that you would move in the houses of worship, that you would move in the schools, that you would bring about a protection over our children. Uh, whereas bullets may flow, but bullets will be stopped. Whereas uh, gangs may move in, that you will stop them in their tracks. Yeah. Whereas people may be fearful, but they would cry out, The Lord is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Then whereas somebody may cry out, The Lord is my life and my salvation. Yeah. Whereas someone may cry out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Whereas somebody may cry out, Jesus. Yes. And because they cry out, Jesus, they're able yes. to stay in your arms and be protected. And you will be a comforter for them during this season. We pray for all of our seniors, not only in this community, but in this country, that you will be this God who comforts them through peace. 
We pray wherever the divided line that is happening in this country, whereas it is growing bigger. But Heavenly Father, you will bring about this peace that brings together the white and the black. You will bring together ethnicities. You will bring together the genres. You will bring together people who have once been at odds with each other, but now because they see that we are being separated, that it's against our humanity, that you want us to be together and that we will come at peace to have a greater come. We pray for our government that you will touch them. We pray for the leaders of this country. We pray for the politicians that you may touch them. We pray for clergy all around this country, not only in this denomination, but all around. But the mercy of God will prevail. That there would be now uh, an upsetting where they will speak truth to power. Where they will speak now truth because when we speak truth, we are free. When we speak the truth of God. Now, Heavenly Father, be with us tonight as we go through this Bible study. Give us clarity. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding. But most of all, give us love for each other. Give us a love that is powerful. Give us a love that is addictive. Give us a love whereby it's not in things, but it's a love that comes from the heart and the minds of your children. Give us a love that will cause this community to rise up and come into this house of God and speak and declare the day of the Lord. And we bless your name. And everybody says amen. amen. And everybody says amen. 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 Let's go around the room and just say uh, a phrase or a paragraph that comes to your mind in praying. Start with you, Vanessa. Okay, I just thank God for today. I thank Him for waking me up. I thank Him for my family. I thank Him for my church family. I thank Him for making me a better new for 2019. To have more patience, show more love towards those who might not show the same. I just want to thank God for my family again and just my church family as a whole and my pastor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I thank the Lord for this day and for 2019. And I ask the Lord to give me more patience and more peace and understanding.
us pray. I thank you for all that you have done. I thank you for the simple meaning with your grace and mercy. And I ask you, Lord, to continue to protect me and honor my steps. In Jesus' name. Amen. We want to wish you and your family a prosperous, wonderful, God-filled, blessed new year. And we pray that you could join us on Tuesdays for our Bible study, uh, which happens at 7 p.m. And also on Sundays at uh, 11 a.m. for our Sunday morning services. If you do not go to a church, if you do not go to a church, I would love to meet you. We are here at 90 Schenectady Avenue. We are off of Atlantic and Pacific, and we are between Pacific and D. That's 90 Schenectady Avenue. Um, please stay on with us. Tonight we'll be going through, um, still doing the survey of the New Testament, and tonight we'll be looking at parables, parables. Um, so we want to um, look at these specific things before we go at an in-depth look at the scriptures just because we understand that the New Testament itself has so many compartments to it that you would understand when you get to know these fundamentals and these foundations and these pillars of what the New Testament is made up of your Bible reading for you personally and for your church will be so much better I hope that you can uh, go on your notification and uh, let your friends know that Bethel Tabernacle is on tonight and let them know that we are here to help them so that they can help someone else. God bless you. Stay with us and let us know um, if you have any questions, how we can help you. God bless you. Let's go through. Um, so tonight, we'll let's just do a quick review. Let's do a quick review. Um, just before we went on the, the Christmas break, just before we went on the Christmas break, we were looking at how the New Testament is made up of. And we said that um, the New Testament has um, groups, and we see groups of people who are known as Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. And then we also looked at um, Jesus himself. Um, Jesus becomes the sole person, that one person in the New Testament where it is, that is the integral force, the one person that, and from Matthew all the way down to Revelation, that there is a central concentration on this individual who we see as Jesus. And Jesus, Jesus comes as God in the form of what? Form of man. The Bible says that he takes on the form of a servant. And so he is God in the flesh of man. All right? So yes, y'all are with me. He's God in the form of flesh of man. So he's able 
to, as the scripture tells us, to understand as God what we are experiencing and still able to experience the emotions, the fleshly emotions that we face as people. However, John gives us, the book of the Gospel of John gives us a great insight into Jesus. He says that he came unto his what? His own. And his own did not what? Receive him. So to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become, uh, it's, not, it's not genre specific, it's genre as in the sense of both man and woman who accepts him, all right? So whoever accepts him, he gives them the power. And one verse that we normally recite all the time since you were in Sunday school is what? For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but what? Amen. So you all know that even before you all were born. All right? <laughs> but in that we see, we see an understanding even of who Jesus is. Jesus came that we may have a closer relationship to the Father. Y'all got that? Yes. Jesus came that we may have a closer relationship to the Father. And because he came that we have a closer, not every single person received him. Right? Some people call him Beelzebub. Y'all remember that. Right? The prince of demons or the prince of devils. And then some call him Rabbi. Right? Some call him Master. And some call him, let's go around. Now, I remember I did this. You probably want to ship somewhere. Um, some call him Son of what? Son of Man. Son of Man. What else? Son of David. Son of David. All right. They call him. What's another name that, give me names that they called him. Give me names that they called him. Y'all got that? Good. <laughs> you got to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else? I just need a wonderful. Well, now, don't give me the Old okay. Testament names okay. that he was referred to. Give me New Testament names. Okay. Give me New okay. Testament names. Emmanuel. Where in Emmanuel? You see, where in the New yeah. Testament do you yeah. see Emmanuel? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Give me New Testament names that you see comes up in the Gospel. What I'm asking for is New Testament names of Jesus. We did the review, go back to your notes, just before the Christmas break, yep. when all of y'all were popular yep. names with me. <laughs> Give me names that he was known for in the New Testament, where people would call him. We said son of David. What else? This is very easy. All you have to do is dust it. What's that? Rabbi. Rabbi. We said Rabbi. We said Master. All right, what else? Come on. Come on. Come on, ministers. Come on. Son of the living God. Okay, yes, I'll take that. Son of the living God. What else? We're asking for names. King of like, Kings. Where was he referred to as King of Kings? <laughs> Outside of Revelation. Oh, so give me names from Matthew all the way down to Jude. Y'all know where Jude is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who said Jude is right in Genesis? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so give me names. Uh, yes, you can go to your body. This is an open test book. Okay. I can't give me names. <laughs> give me names. Oh, names in the Bible. Give me names in the Bible. He was called between. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me, John. <laughs> He asks his disciples a question. Who do they say? I am. I am. And some says that you are what? The great No. No, some says you are Elijah. All right, this is very easy. That's right. But he was names that he was called or he was referred to from Matthew to Jude. 
names that Jesus was called from the Gospel of Matthew to the Epistle of Jude. You can list the names right there on the screen. Let us know so we can see the names. Please participate with us. So this will help you. This will help you. So, James, open up your Bibles. This is an open book. You're in the midst of your homes. You can open up your Bible and see. How about, how about this? Let me give you all one. Isn't this the son of Mary? Joseph. They never said Joseph. They said he's the son of Mary. Because they were trying to insult him. Some say, well, yeah. they call it, scriptures right. refer to him as yeah. the carpenter's right. son. Okay. What else? Mm -hmm. What else? Look through Matthew. Mm -hmm. How about Christ? Christ. 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 Y'all forget those things? Jesus Christ. How about Christ? Christ. Christ. Oh, let's keep going. What else? Yeah. What's that? It's the first verse of Matthew. Look at that. What else? Son of Abraham. All right, keep going. We said Messiah. Keep going. So we got son of David, son of Mary, the carpenter's son, Rabbi. What did? Give me some names. Jesus called himself. Let me help you. Give me some names. Jesus referred to himself as then. The good shepherd. What else? The light of the world. The what? The light of the world. Okay, the light of the world. What else? The great I am. The way, the truth, and the light. Okay. What else? Y'all know this. Y'all know that, right? But all that cake and all that libations, y'all were drinking. <laughs> What else? Come on. Matthew. What does Mark call him? Does anybody say the son of God? I doubt not the son of God. Okay. okay. <laughs> Jesus says, I am the vine. Keep, let's, let's keep going. Keep going. There's so much there. There's so much there. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Give me some names he was referred to as. Give me some names he was removed. Now, we did this a few weeks ago, so I'm not going to stay here too long. Give me some names. This is just to help you when you're praying. This is good to know the different names of when you're praying, but you understand what you should be, what you can refer to your father, what you can refer to Jesus as. All right. Y'all keep searching. Y'all are not good at open book tests, right? All right. Y'all still can't find it, right? No. That's what your Bible says? No, <laughs> See, that's where the problem is. That's a good one. She says she has a poster that says what? It refers to Jesus as this, but it's not a name. I need names. Names. The truth be said divine already. There's names in the book of Acts. There is names of Jesus in the book of Matthew. There is names in the book. There is a lot of names in the book of John. There is names in the book of Colossians. I'm just giving you all the... There is names in the book of... You all want more? Yeah. How about 1st and 2nd Corinthians? <laughs> right. There is names. There is names in Luke. Mm, 
Wow. Right. He said, somebody said the light is ready. All right. All right. We're not going to spend too long on the so I need to go on. So just make a note of that. But he's referred to as all of these names. And you should, it's a good thing to know these names when you're praying for your own prayer life. All right? Ask again next week. All right? So it's good to know these names. Now, one of the things that you see in, one of the things that you see, we see in the New Testament, is especially in the Gospels, especially in the Synoptic Gospels, is one of parables, how Jesus spoke to the people. And Jesus spoke to the people in parables. Why? Does any, can anybody give me the answer to this? Why? The question is, why did Jesus speak in parables? Why did Jesus speak in parables? He gave an explanation to, to the people. Everybody turn to Mark 4. Everybody turn to Mark 4. Turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark chapter 4. The Gospel of Mark chapter 4. Gospel of Mark chapter 4. By there? Yeah, yeah. All right, so the disciples asked him a question. Um, the disciples asked, Why is it that when you speak to us or to the people, they, the reason why they were trying to do this is because they were trying to differentiate when Jesus spoke, is it for the people or is it for the disciples? Is it for the people? So go to Mark chapter 4, and I want you to go to verse 10. Mark chapter 4, verse 10. And he says here, I'm reading the, um, the King James Version. I was trying to look for a newer, a newer version. And my version says, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And verse 11 says, And he said unto them, Unto you, who is he speaking to? The to the disciples. Unto you it is given to know what? The mystery. the mystery of the kingdom of God. But look at this. But now he's separating the disciples from the crowd. Y'all see that? You all see that? I hope you see that with us. He's separating the disciples from the crowd. He says, but unto those who are without, the people, the people, the crowd. Mm -hmm. All these things are done in what? Parables. In parables. But seeing, they may what? See. See. And not what? Perceive. And not perceive. So you could be looking at something and not understand it. Anybody ever read something and you just totally don't know what you're reading? And it's like, I mean, I watched this, this series called Game of Thrones and I, I, I need a friend to tell me what I'm, what the, the, the behind the hidden things that I don't understand. Y'all see that? Yeah. That scene they may what? I'm, I'm watching it every single time when it comes on. But I'm watching it, but I don't understand what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. That scene they may see. Is that a good example for you? Yes. 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 Or you watch some, um, some soap opera. For those of you who watch, um, give me a soap opera. Days of our lives, or all my children. And then there is behind the scenes of behind the scenes of all these things that happened. 
and you're like, what? What happened? But it's even like the reading the Bible. It's hard right? to understand. And reading the Bible, it. that's correct. Yeah. Reading the Bible, like she says, is hard sometimes. Because you're reading it. Anybody ever read Revelation? Have you ever read Revelation? And you go like, what? What, uh, that's right. what is this? She stays out of Revelation. It's like a. It's, 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 a it's, 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 it's a frightening tale to her. But see, you may see and not what? Understand. And look at this. And hearing, they may hear. Right? And not understand. Who ever go to a concert? You're in the midst of the concert. Right? And depending on where you're seated, you don't know what the person is singing. But you know the words because you bought the tape or the CD or whatever else. But you just don't know. You're hearing the words, right? You're hearing it, but it's not coming across what? Clearly. It's not coming across clearly. Or the preacher may be preaching on a Sunday morning. And you have everybody else is quoting the scriptures with him. And you're like, huh? <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. But you're hearing him, and you don't know what he's saying. Right? Yeah. All right. And, and he gives one more. That hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be what? Converted. Converted. They should be changed. They should be changed and their sins should be forgiven. But look at the, you got to look at the what is known as the contrapositive of this. The contrapositive simply means if Jesus is saying that if seeing they may see and hearing they may hear and they, they're going to be a change, then the contrapositive of this is that, wow. If you really do hear and you really do see and come to an understanding, your life will be changed. Yeah. Let me make it more simpler for you. How, what happened on the day? Go back, I know for some of y'all, like Reverend Brother, 1000 years ago. What happened on the day when you said yes? to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, I do remember that. You see that? Yeah. What happened on the day when you decided, oh my gosh, today is the day I'm going to repent. And that day changed the entire course of your life. Exactly. But go back to the day before that. <laughs> go back to the day before that. You were as stubborn and you heard 10 other preachers. You heard the gospel preach. Unless you were born in church. No. Am, I making, am I making sense here? Yeah. Like you've been going to church all that time. But then that one day came. And then you're like, whoa, he's talking to me. I got it. And then everything becomes what? Clear. Yeah. Do you notice from since that day going forward, your understanding changes now. You're no longer that, you know, you don't have to read the book of dummies anymore. You're no longer like, oh, <laughs> some things are what? Much clearer. You all see that? Yep. Some yep. things are much clearer now. So. It's like one day you didn't know how to cook. And then finally you, you realize, I got this. I understand. And then it makes a big difference. And this is what Jesus is saying to them. Yeah. All right? Y'all got that? Yeah. And, and so he spoke parables because there are some things, there are some things that the people of God needs to hear. Y'all with me? Yeah. 
the people of God needs to hear. The, that's, in that time it was, he's speaking to the disciples. And then, once they get it, it's for them now to hold on to it, to go change those other people. Who was he mostly working on at that time? The disciples. The reason why you come to church every single Sunday is not really so you can hear a gospel for you. You come into the church so you could get educated, trained to go back out and teach them. So somebody who can hear it, see it, understand it. Hear it, see it, understand it, they get changed. Y'all see that? They hear it. Um, faith coming by what? Hearing. Hearing. And hearing by what? The word, the word of God. And the and the book of Romans, Romans 1 tells us that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Y'all see that? Yes. Romans 1, look around 16, 17. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first Gentiles but it is the power of God that brings justification and speaking of so how do we how do we make sense of parables what is parables what is his so here's now Jesus he's on the scene and he comes with Give me, and I said, gave this clue to you uh, uh, quite maybe some time ago for all of y'all who was coming. Give me another part of the Old Testament where parables were spoken. Where one specific parable was spoken in the Old Testament. Y'all remember? This was a critical one. So let me give you, let me give you a very colloquial description of what a parable is. A parable is an indirect truth or an indirect saying to bring about truth. A parable, a parable is an indirect saying, is a fictitious story to cause truth. Let me say that again, y'all got that? A parable so y'all know I'm going to ask you this in a few weeks, right? Yeah. And some of y'all are going to be like, what? A parable mm -hmm. is an indirect saying, a fictitious story, fictitious story that causes one to know what? Truth. If y'all want me to say that over again, I hope you can write that so when we come back next week, we're going to ask you. Y'all yeah. got that one? Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah. speak up loud as if I Those are what I call segments of it. It's not the full thing of it. So what they said is, a parable is a, what you said, a earthly story with heavenly meaning. Does all parables have, watch this now, but if you leave it there, then you, get, you can mess people up. Because does all parables have an earthly story with a heavenly meaning to it? So give me an example if y'all are going to say that. Does all parables have an earthly story with a heavenly meaning? What you're saying, um, just, just Dorothy, what you're, what you're saying is that parables are broken up into categories. Parables are broken. There is, there is basically six types of parables. All right? There's basically six types of parables. Some say four. I say six. There is basically six types of parables. 
and I'm going to come to your earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So let's let me let me jump ahead of myself. Does the story of the prodigal son is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning? I would say yes. All right. So tell me why. I would say because um, the prodigal son basically was one of the bad people, but then he became a better person, and so I think that from, he went from one place to another place. All right. Basically. And then somebody else, y'all heard she said the prodigal son was a bad son. I need somebody to counteract that. This is a learning lesson, so we're not, nobody's wrong. This is learning, so... All right, somebody else. Can leave it there. Yes. I think he was a son that didn't want to wait his turn for the inheritance. Okay. So he actually his turn, his inheritance first. Right. Went out to the world with it. And then, then he found that he didn't do good out there. Okay. Or so called lose all the inheritances of right. he had to he had to he had to beg for food. Right. And he said, Why am I begging? Let me go back home to my father's house where I know it's coming from. That's correct. The father welcomed him with open arms. Right. So you're saying, so are you saying that the prodigal story is a story, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning? I would say so. You will say so. What do you say, brother? I said the opposite of that. Okay, tell me why. Because he started out where he had all the benefits as a son, mm -hmm. and he took upon himself to mm -hmm. go out and explore the world. That's like leaving and tasting the salvation and then going out mm -hmm. and finding out that you lost what you thought was a problem to you. Now you came back when you hit the rock bottom. Is the, let me ask you a question. Is the prodigal, prodigal son story about the son who left home? No. Not it's all. The, not not all the 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 not it's yeah. about the heart of the brother. Okay. Yep. I'm going to take that. Uh -huh. I, I look at it as um, we are all God's children. And as we grow up and go our own way and, and go into all and get all kinds of things that life does, and you forget a lot of the things that you, you ignore, you don't forget. You know a lot of the things that you were taught as a child coming up in, in the way of the Lord, and then you come back and it's to me. So you're saying that it's a it's an earthly story with a heaven and earth. Right. You're validating that. To me, it's when you come back to God, he opens his okay. eyes. The question is, is the prodigal son parable a story, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning? I'd like to know if you say yes, no, and give us your reason. Just put it in a paragraph to us. All right? So there is, let me just come back to that. There is six types of, of parables. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to come back to whether I think it's an earthly story and why you can't put parables all in that. That's just one. Not all parables have what is known as a plot. Most, there is a plot in the in the story of the uh, the prodigal son because there is a problem and then there was a solution. You understand? Yeah. The big problem is that he asked for his thing. He went. He came back. He came to himself. He came back home. But when he came back home, there was a problem with the other brother. God, uh, the father forgave him. End of story. But there is nothing there that tells you. For those of us who believe it's a heavenly story, mm -hmm. that the other son ever said, yeah. you know what? I received him. Mm -hmm. Never. Never said that. Never said that. There was nothing there. There was nothing to tell you that other brother reconciled with the father mm -hmm. for killing that fat in the car right. and reconciled with the brother. Mm -hmm. What um, scripture is Luke 14, Luke somewhere around here. Yeah. All right, so we have six 
we have, there are six kinds of parables. Usually people say four, but I'm gonna give you my reason for the six. And, but in, in the definition that I gave earlier, you gotta be careful how you um, look at defining parables because parables, parables are like, you, you know, um, a, a type of sponge or that is very flexible and you, you try to squeeze it and it bends in one way, bends in the other way and you can't grab it because there are so many variances of parables. And so, when we, let me give you them. Um, let me give you the first. There is the, what is known as the similitude parable. S-I-M-I-L-I, similitude parables. S-I-M-I-L-I-T-U-D-E. T-U-D-E. S-I. M I L I T similitude parables. Those are known as double indirect parables. All right, and usually they start up with with um, they have like narratives in them. But y'all know what is known as similitude? I've never heard of the word. Yes, yes you have. Yes you have. Yes you have. Yes, you have. Let's go to. Let's go to, let me show you how to, don't even worry about that. Let's go to, no, that's fine. Have you ever heard these lines? For the kingdom of God is as for the kingdom of God is as similitude. All right, it's uh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Is as a s is i s a s for the kingdom of God is as. Give me one story where he uses. Is as. Let me just throw it at y'all because y'all are like, huh? Oh. Is as a grain of mustard seed that is the smallest seed, but when it grows, it mushrooms into the biggest tree that you have ever seen. Don't tell me y'all never heard of that. So what yes, they got to do is similitude. Is at simile. Okay. The word simile defines what? Can somebody help me out? Similar? Similar. Similar. Like as. Okay. Right? Okay. That's like okay. this. But it's not. But it's not. Okay. Because it's what? I thank you very much, Reverend Brother. Because Parables, let me say it again, uh, also mm -hmm. fictitious stories. Mm -hmm. They're not, I hope that when y'all read it, y'all don't think it's real story. Jesus is given an example, so he comes up with a story. what is known as interrogative. I am interrogative powerless. I am T-E-R-R-O-G-A-T-I-T-I-O. G-A-T-I-V-E. Interrogative. Right? And it means? Interrogative. Let me give you an example of it. To what? That's right. 
What is it to be God? Requires a response. Requires a response. No. But what does he do first? Every, please pay attention, every interrogative parable mostly has a question in it that requires, just like you said, a response. Let me give you a good example. To what shall I liken the kingdom of God? To what shall I liken the kingdom of heaven? God, turn to Matthew 11. Turn to Matthew 11, verse 16. Matthew 11, verse 16. And another person turned to Luke 7, 31. Luke's, so one person is going to turn to Matthew 11, 16. It. It. Okay, read it for me, brother. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? Stop right there. Y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. Hello, people. Yeah, which one on Luke? That was from, from Luke 7, 31. Your Bible says, Whereunto shall I liken this generation? You don't worry about finding it. You just write it down. Okay. And then you can be searching it. The two scriptures that I gave is Matthew 11, is Matthew, Matthew 11, 16, and Luke 7, 31, where these are known as interrogative parables where you mostly find a question usually at the start of it or the middle or even the end. And it requires an answer for the persons who it's addressed to. Y'all got that? Yeah. Yep. Look at Matthew also, look at Matthew also 21, 28. Matthew 21, 28. All right? Anybody read Luke 7? Did anyone read Luke 7? Let's look. Luke 7, 31. Luke 7, 31. Luke 7, 31 says, And the Lord said, Whereunto shall I liken the men of this generation? And notice that he follows it up with another question. And to what are they like? And then he does what? And then Jesus gives the answer. All right. Hello, somebody who says parables are like heavenly, what earthly thing, heavenly meaning. Let's read on. Let's read that one. They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. The John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking, eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he had a demon. The son of man is come, eating and drinking, and you say, behold, he's a, he's a, he's a gluttonous man. The wine bibber, a friend of the task of the sin. But wisdom is just what in this, if I was to say that all parables are what? Earthly, the heavenly mean. Do you see anything there that resembles that? No, remember. We're learning. We're all so do you see it? No. Jesus asks a question. Because he needs an answer. So he gives this story with an answer in it, a narrative with an answer in it. What shall I like in the men of this generation? Y'all see that? Yeah. All right. Then we have, so we gave you to the similitude. We gave you the what? Interrogative. Inter Interrogative. Interrogative parable. That's fine. Let's look at what is known as double indirect. Double, the simple double indirect. I'm going to read this for you. A parable, and those consist of a lot of narratives. A parable is a fictitious story, which I told you already, yeah. which narrates a particular event, is usually told in the past tense, and is intended to convey a moral 
or spiritual truth. You all see that? So the prodigal son was one of what? Of both. Of a moral. We see a moral thing happening in the story of the prodigal son, right? Yes. But we also see one of spiritual truth in the prodigal son. Right. Because we see the father doing what? Forgiving the son. But we also see one of morality happening and immorality. The son, the other brother, not forgiving. The son who is, there is so many things in that story, the son of a brother. Um, being a Jew, we hope he's a Jew, and then he is what? Feeding the pigs. Jews don't do what? They don't do that. So there is... There is, there is that conflicting cause that's happening there. There's a conflicting cause where he's asking for his inheritance earlier. Y'all see that? Yes. All right. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so let's look at um, Luke 14. Somebody turn to Luke 14. Luke 14, 15 to 24. I think that's the story of the party. It should be. 15. Luke 14. Luke 15. Uh, what about Luke 14 for a second? Is there anything in Luke 14? Let's look at Luke 14. Let's look at... um. Yes, Luke 14, 15 to 24. Look. The gospel, the gospel of Luke is filled with all of these parables. And it's good to um, take your time and read them. And, and some of these parables have double meanings. Some of these parables have the answer within them. And some of these parables is intended for when you read it, you come at a specific truth. Um, some of these parables is meant to make you think. Um, as in the story of the what the Good Samaritan, all right, is to make you think one of morality, one of how do you treat your fellow men, and are you a citizen of humanity? And so that's what parables tend to convey. Let's go to 14, Luke 14, 15. Y'all see that? All right, somebody read it. Um, who's gonna read? And Use the mic for me so they can hear you. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto them, A certain man made a great supper and begged many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need to go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And the other one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I, have, I, and I go to prove them. I pray that ye have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes in the city of the city, and bring in hither the poor, the main, and the and the, the halt, and the blind. And that servant said, Lord, it is done as thou has commanded, and yet there is room. Stay right there. All right. So, if you notice, this is known as, we, we call this a what? A double? A double indirect, right. A double indirect narrative. I need everybody here with me. So, a double indirect narrative. But what we see here is a story 
a, a, huge, a story that has its own answers. Okay. Y'all see that? Yep. Yeah. This is a parable that fixes itself. In this particular parable, the story, the parable of the, I think it's called the parable of the Great Supper in Luke 14, um, 15 to 24, this is a parable where um, Jesus is telling the story and he's not looking for an answer because the parable supplies an answer unto itself. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Yeah. Yeah. It supplies an answer unto itself. And so if you go down to verse 23 and 24, it says here, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be what? Filled. Filled. For I say unto you that none of those men who were bidden shall taste of my supper. So there was a resolution to the problem. Y'all see that? Yeah. There was a resolution. So some parables, if you're going to speak on it, it provides its own resolution. And you can use a parable to teach a great story. You can see, you know, there was there's this parable that Jesus spoke of about um, when this man invited all these people to come to this event and they never wanted to come. But the man, but and then you say to the person, well, who were you inviting to come? Who did you expect him to come? You're inviting the wrong people. Why don't you go get some homeless people and see if they will show up? Tell them that there's some free food and free clothes, and you see if the whole place get packed. And then you'll see that's the truth. It's right here. It's the same thing with God. People who think that they don't need God makes up what? Excuses. Excuses. Right. Or they can tell you a story. About they, what they, you know. they know. They know. They, they feel they don't need God, so they come up with all of these excuses. And God says, you know what? Don't worry about these people. Go out to those who are naked, who don't have it. Go get them and let them come and sit at the table. He provides a resolution to a problem because the table was empty. Right? Table was empty. And, and that was the problem. The table was empty. So he needs people at the table. So what does he do? He go find people to fit at the table. All right? Y'all see that? Yeah. All right. The next one is, we need to move on, is known as juridical parables. J-U. The next parable is known as juridical. J-U-R-I. D I C I A L. Juridical parables. Alright? So let me give you this and then y'all can tell me what comes to your mind. Juridical, juridical parables. I hope you're writing that down for next week. <coughs> so parables, these are parables that elicit a self condemnation from the hearers. These are parables, but when you're listening to it, it makes you feel guilty and makes you do what? Because there is an image of it. As the person is saying it to you, there is an image of it because the person paints a picture in this. Okay? Give me an example of when that was done. Give me one from the Old Testament. Give me one from the Old Testament where a parable was told to this important person, a picture was painted, and it's to make the person feel condemned by saying it to them. What do you think that was? Who? I'm sorry, who? Cain slew Abel, that was a parable? Oh, no, no, no. Did he feel guilty? I said, I said, someone told somebody a parable. 
just like Jesus told somebody a parable. But this is in the Old Testament now. So a parable was told to this great important person. And as the parable was being told, the person painted a picture for them, an image. But the, the reason that they painted the picture is to make the person feel condemned. Nathan and David. And David. Thank you very much. I'd like to. <laughs> very good. Nathan and David. So Nathan goes to the king's house and says, Oh, king, there was a man who had one single sheep. And this other man had all this. This man went and took his one sheep. What do you think should be done to this man? To elicit, to make him reach the point of self-condemnation. I can tell you something that will make you say, oh, gosh. I, I didn't know that's how you thought about this. You understand? But I'm telling you a story. I said, Vanessa, two weeks ago, this man went down to the store. He bought some good fish. And the fish that he bought, when he ate it, um, he says the fish was really good. But then this other homeless man um, was eating this great Jamaican burger. And he went and grabbed the burger from the man, because he saw the burger was there unattended, took the burger off of the, the grill without the man looking. And the man turned around and said, who ate my burger? What do you think should happen to this man? Choke it out of him. No, I'm just and she said, <laughs> choke it out of him. <laughs> and the man says, and that's oh, a, he might be hungry. It was Smitty who did. <laughs> choke him again. <laughs> Y'all see the point now? Yeah. It's the same thing. It's to make a person reach the point of saying feeling guilty. Guilty about their actions. Okay? Those so a, a simpler more word, a simpler word for it is parables that bring judgment. Parables that bring judgment. Alright? Oh Jerusalem. Y'all remember this one when Jesus says, If thou had listened to the prophets, thy walls will still be standing. Right? And then the disciple says, What? When shall these things be? So those are one. Then we have another one known as single, single. Indirect parables, single, single, indirect parables. Y'all got that? So these are, uh, the primary purpose of these is to present a positive or negative uh, look at an individual who serves as an example to be either imitated or avoid it. Y'all got that? Say that again. The primary purpose of single indirect parables is to present a narrative to make you look at a person that makes you want to be like them or to avoid them. Somebody give me a good example. I said it earlier. We're looking now at indirect parables. Parables these teachings are really good for you as you teach in your church, as you teach in for your Bible study, as you teach um, in the stories that you will have in your own personal lives. You can use these things. Indirect parables. Stories that everybody goes to Luke 10.37. Luke 10.37. And he said, 
Well, no, let's go to Luke 10 30. Luke 10 30. Look at that. So remember, we're looking at single indirect parables. And these are parables that make you see an individual that you either want to be like or avoid. All right? What do you, somebody read that story for me? And read it loud. And Jesus answered. Read it loud so those And are Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his rediment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there, there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And like what did he do? He passed by on the other side. He passed by on the other side. Do you want to be like this person? No. Why wouldn't you want to be like this person if you are a priest? What what could not the priest do? Why would why how many people passed him? He could not touch the he, he could, could not touch him. Why? Touch the dead. Okay. Would he assume that the man be dead? Yes, he did. Okay. So go on. And like a Levite and like a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Okay. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He had what? Compassion on him. Okay. And went to him and bound up and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own breast, and brought him to an end and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thy spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And now with these three, think if thou... All right, let's, let's pause this one out. Let's take some time and pause this one out. Who are the three that pass by? Who are the three? We're looking at Luke, Luke chapter 10, 30. Who are the three? That passed by. It was um, one was a priest, a, a priest and a Levite, mm -hmm. and um, the other Samaritan. The Samaritan had yeah. compassion. Yeah. What y'all got? Who are the three? It's right there in front of me. Who are the three that passed by? You sure it wasn't two? <laughs> <laughs> Who are the three that passed by? What does the Bible say? We all read the story again. Who are the three that passed by? A certain priest, a Levite, and a good Samaritan. It wasn't a trick question. But they said the Samaritan journey and came where he was. But he made a decision to do what? That's right. He had to pass to see him. I mean, how y'all read it? He said he came where he was. He didn't say he left. That's a left him. Two made a decision <laughs> to leave. Uh, right. Y'all see that? Yeah. Right. Two made a decision to leave. He made a decision not to keep going. Uh -huh. To stop. Stop. Take action. To stop. To take action. Right. Some parables, the use of there's something called direct parables also. But the the point of this is is to Make you consider and do what? Take action. But he took him to the end to, to fix him up. But he took action. action. The other two. Why did Jesus use a Samaritan in this story? Because they were the outcasts from the Jews, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. And That's correct. Because the Samaritans were the outcasts. So. Jesus used this story to provoke that usually 
the ones who should be doing it are not doing it. The ones who should show up for for um, the protests or the ones who should show up for um, all these critical, important marches, they're not showing up. The ones who should be shown to make a difference, all they're doing is pass by. Because they value, they value what? Going to the events more than the humanity that's in front of them. You got all of that out of that story. Yeah. That's good. You understand? <laughs> Deep. I, I'm yeah. going. <laughs> y'all see that? Yeah. So yeah, he's, you could, it's, but let's, what I always tell y'all, you got to bring it into contemporary times. How else do we do this every day? How else do you see this example every single day or every single week? Oh, you see people in the street all the time and just pass. Good. And then you're on your way to where? Church. Yeah. So which one are you? The Pharisee, the, um, the Levite, <laughs> the priest? <laughs> or you are, oh, everybody <laughs> wants to be the good Samaritan. <laughs> everybody <laughs> wants it. When was the last time that somebody, before you stopped by Bethel okay. Tabernacle on 90th oh, Symmetry, no, check this door. out. You went, <laughs> you went to the Bedford Men's homeless shelter first, and say I'm gonna go there first, and then come to Bethel. Who did that? And then I will give you the crown today that you are the good Samaritan. I'm sorry, I can't wear the crown. Oh, she doesn't want the crown anymore. It's so cool, but well, not cool. But it's so amazing, I should say, how when we read scriptures. We want to be biased and be on the good side of the good people. But 90% of the time, Jesus is saying, self-condemnation, single indirect, we are on the side of the people who should be condemned. Well, we're living in a time. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we, the excuse part time. is coming. Yeah, we're, we're living in a time. You can't be stopping and helping That's anybody. True, because two things come out. They could either do you in or charge you with something. I love it. Never happened. All right. Yes. Y'all heard what he says. He says that we're living in a time that you can't stop to help anybody. No, not cut. anybody. Okay. Everybody. 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 Yeah. You, you're living in a time where you can't stop to help everybody because um, I'm not going to mention your name for this one. Um, whereby you can't stop because of the negative implications that can happen. What is the difference? We're, we're still on Luke chapter 10, verse 30. What, could ha what were the other two fearful of? Protect what? Identity. No. What happened? Let's go back to the man who. Let's read the story again. Please, let's read the story with me. The story of the Good Samaritan. Let's read the story. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to teach you something tonight. Um, what we're going to do is extract it up, exhume it out of the historical time. And we are going to go in history. We're going to take that out, and we're going to go back in history. Okay. Evil in that time is as evil as it could be. True. Let me say that again. Evil in that time uh -huh. is as... Those people weren't saying, man... <laughs> When 2019 comes around, that's going to be a better year than this year that we're facing. In that time, check this out. In that time, they're going to have big armies. They're going to be the United States of America army protecting us. We're going to be walking down the street. There's going to be street lights and the street lights. And there's going to be police people everywhere. And then we're going to be in our cars driving. And um, we don't need to stop. 
And this, this man right here, this, he decided he was going to walk the same road that everybody is walking, and it just so happened he gets robbed. What should he have said? I knew I shouldn't have come to 2019. I should have stayed in 1650 or 328 or 509 or 728 BC. Is that what he should have said? Hold on. Don't, don't ask me yet. Because what you're saying is the times of today is not as worse as it is. It's, the evil of that time was as evil as it could be. And it must have been more because they didn't have no street lights. True. So he's walking on this street, right? All right, let's read the story. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and did what? Fell among thieves. Boom! <laughs> Fell among thieves. So you're saying. I, I, I'm driving in my car. That's right. I ain't gonna stop for nobody. You didn't even say the old woman. You just said, <laughs> you, you no, just I said, I ain't stopping for her because I've stopped for some old woman. Hold on, hold on. I've done that. I've done that. But, but, but I'm just going for what you said. Man. You say, I ain't gonna stop for nobody because they, they, they might rob me, they might take my last dollar that I got, and they might even put. And we can rewind it. <laughs> they, might, they might put something in my car and tell me, get up my car and rob my. It's the same thing he fell with. Among he fell thieves. Among thieves. thieves. He's, but watch this. Watch this. He's walking down this road. Right? Mm -hmm. He didn't know that this was going to happen to him. He didn't know. Oh, but check this out. Watch this. Watch it. You got to read it. Okay, now it's coming to me. You got to okay. read it. Right? Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Um, who stripped him of all his clothes, wounded him, and left him. Half dead. The Bible is very. Look. Look what the Bible does. It puts a comma. Wounded, stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, left him, and left him half dead. Watch this. And by chance, there came a certain priest that way. In other words, watch this. Up. The priest probably knew there was, must have been some sort of knowledge that that street was a bad street mm -hmm. to walk down. Hear me out. Why would the Bible say, by chance? Mm -hmm. What does your version say? Because we we'll all be the By chance. chance. By chance. It all says by chance. Uh -huh. Where is that? 31. 31. By chance, they came down a certain priest. So this priest, why would the Bible say a certain priest? Mm. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So in other words, he may have a little clout. Let's, let's put some badges on him. He may have a little clout to him. <laughs> a certain priest. He works where Anita works. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that way. And when he saw him, he saw, he did what? He, no, 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 no. He saw him. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait a second. Y'all going too fast for me. I'm listening because, you know, he saw him. Reverend, 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 you saw him. Him. Reverend, you saw her. Reverend, he, and you kept driving. Reverend, listen, I ain't saying. Back in the days, I, I got to, I, I, I'm old enough to tell you what was very common. Back okay, in the hey, let, 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 let's put that. Let's put this right there. Right, right. <laughs> he saw him. Not only did he see him, he passed by. Check where. So he 
purposely went out of his way. He saw him over here. And he decided, <laughs> I'm going to take this side of it. No, no, no. We, can I tell you, we do this all the time. You know how we do it? We say, I ain't going. I, I've done it too. Um, you, you ever go on the subway during the hot, the heat, or the hot days of summer? And you know this one person who's always there. Or they might be outside the supper. Mm -hmm. And you know they have not taken a shower mm -hmm. for months. <laughs> and you see them coming in your direction. <laughs> you no, no, no. Let's, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You I see them coming up back and tell you in your direction. <laughs> what? You see, the problem what with the, the problem what? The problem of how. When we read the Bible, we like to disconnect the Bible from us and keep it. That's why I, I purposely gave you single indirect narrative. I gave you these things because how we read it, we, we don't connect with it. And when you don't connect with it, as preachers, you can't preach it because you're disconnected with it. How I read it is like this. Man, that's the person. That's the, that's Joe Schmo on 59th Street of Columbus Circle. I passed him. He was smelling like pee. I passed him. And I knew I felt guilty, but I don't want no pee on me. Because I'm thinking if he gets close to me, if I go on the subway, I'm going to smell like pee too. So guess what I do? I pass on the other side. Yeah. I mean, people on the subway, somebody is smelling really like high perfume. They put on all the cologne. I'm talking the, the raw cologne. And next thing you know, you made a mistake. You're wondering, oh my God, this car is clean. Nobody's in this car. You think you hit the lotto. And you step in the train, in the car, and you realize you've made the biggest mistake of your life. Because there's this one person who stinks up the entire car. And I see somebody just turn their nose up like, really? What do you do? You don't say, excuse me, I can take you to a place where you can get a shower. Would you like a shower? I like to pray for you. Or do you say, oh my goodness, who's taking this car up like this? Why don't they get him out of here? You're going to say it out loud. No, you don't. <laughs> the thought is as worse as not doing anything about it. Each one of these, uh, yes, examples, yes. I got a story I can tell you each one of what happened in reality with me. Okay. And I had to make a decision. Both at work and just going someplace. Right. Each one of them. But if you be here about another half okay. hour. Okay, you don't want to be here. I, I know. So <laughs> I got you. You're saying you had your own experiences <laughs> with each yeah. one. And I get Definitely that. So. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is if this is a total behavior in the body of Christ. It's not to pick you up. I'm not picking you up. This is a total behavior in the body of Christ. Um, what I, I was watching this thing one time where, and I was actually going to do it, where a pastor um, decided that he was going to uh, put on his makeup and become homeless at the front of his church. And he did it for an entire week. You know, they hooked him up with cameras and all these other things. And some people were passing him on. One or two, but the majority of the people of the church went over to him and says, can I pray with you? Here's some money. Here's some, and they caught it all on camera. That's different. But in our own genre of community, if we see somebody in front of our church most times on a cardboard, 
and they're there for not maybe for okay, we give them an hour. And let's push it. When I came to this place first, and I'm not gonna say where we are, there were a few people who were sitting at the front of the church. Right. And they were like, are you gonna drive us away? And I was like, I was shocked. What do you mean drive us away? And they told me the story. But why would I drive you over? And it was only by sitting there with them I learned their stories. And in a matter of weeks, one of them died. I told you all the story. And I ended up praying for the friend who, what? Who remained, his best friend died. And he was so broken. Point is, is he sitting there now? No. I didn't have to drive him away. Because you know why? Because he gained my respect. By if I said, shoo, get away from here, man. <laughs> Guess what he would do? He would sit there to aggravate me. That's right. <laughs> but because I prayed for him, every time he sees me now, he knows my name. Hey Dave, how are you doing, Pastor? Dave and Pastor. He comes by there. Hey Dave, how you doing, Pastor? Yeah. I'ma come one Sunday. Thank you. He still remembers me praying for him. You see that? It's that's right. It's it's understanding that you don't walk on the other side, even though you don't know what's there sometimes. Right. And yes, you use Jesus says, um, when you go into the city, use what? Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. But he sends them into a city. He said, if you go, if you go on. If you're going to witness, which we, most people don't do now, but in our community at least, um, you're supposed to go two by two. Right. And the reason why you go two by two is because, one, it prevents you from getting attacked. Mm -hmm. It is a method, God has a method for our own madness. Because God knows that man is, man would do things that hurt. And so he gives you the precaution. This man was walking by himself. And then the two persons, the Levite, it was the first one is a Levite, a priest. The pri and, and okay, verse 32 said, and likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, check this out, came. Watch this, watch this, watch this face. Though. He came oh, and he looked at him, right? And he was like, uh uh, that ain't happening today. He looked at him. He came over and looked at him. I do that all the time. In a hard door. And I'm going to tell you all do it too. But I'm going to put myself in glass. Because she says, how you do it? Tell us how you do it. You the pastor. Let me tell how you all do it too. You ever saw somebody so drunk in the summertime and they're on the street and you don't know if they're dead or alive. Mm -hmm. And guess what we do? Notice how I change it from me to we. <laughs> guess what we do? We just keep it rolling. Because you don't want to be the one to be like, I found a dead man. So you keep it walking. Is that what you're supposed to do? Because yeah. you are, because we are, hello, we are, we are the priests. You know, it's crazy how we say, on Sunday mornings when preachers and preachers says, um, you're peculiar people. A royal priest. Shut up. That's right. You're the head of that. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> and then you walk outside, make a left on Atlantic, and you see a man on the ground. <laughs> you, you, just, you just step 
over here. He just, you make it, and, and some, of our, uh, some of our ladies, they have heels on and making sure their heels doesn't get dirty. The heels over the humanity. Because we have become the Jews, and those people become what? The Samaritans. We have become the priests who did what? Walk on the other side. And then we have become the Levite. Who does? We come close. And we say, uh -uh. The Lord didn't make me to be a fool. And you start even quote the scriptures. <laughs> the Lord said, the Lord be with you. But I know what the Lord says. Ten thousand shall fall by my side. They shall not come now. God bless you. God bless you and keep it moving. Lord, I pray for him that somebody will come and heal him. But not me. I pray you send somebody to help him. Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. But not me today, Lord. Not me today. Good, but I, I know what the point behind all this, what they did. You have to go back and read the Old Testament that's and the right. law. That's the right. No. And, and, and that's the problem. Right. Okay, let me, but as I say, you take it from historical times, just give me five moments, historical times and bring it to contemporary times, right? Right. What are we doing today, which is our law? It's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning. You know that Reverend Allen don't like you to be late for church. Right. You're turning the corner to come up Schenectady. And you know you see this man is beating his wife. And you know what you say? Two things. You say, number one, I, I, I don't like to be late for church. That's number one. And you say, I don't like to interfere in other people's business. It's not my business. <laughs> right. What do you think those people are saying? The same thing. The law says. The law says. The law says this. The law, that's why Paul came and says, the law was our slave master. The law binded us up. The law kept us enslaved. And it's right there. Because we create all these rules besides the rules that God gave us in the Old Testament. And then we add rules upon rules upon rules. And then we forget the humanity. And that's what Jesus is saying in this. That's why, that's why there's these variances of Psalms and of um, parables. And yes, there are some that are uh, earthly, what you said? Earthly, earthly good and heavenly bound and all these other things. And y'all put it, and, and all these other things. But God wants you to, how do you look at the humanity and get provoked? The point of parables sometimes is to provoke you to do what I said earlier. Provoke you to action. Right? To what do we like in the kingdom of God? What shall we say? And the kingdom of God is like a certain man walked down. And then you go like, okay, that's just a parable. And you don't see yourself as one of the persons in that parable. How many of us have read the story of the prodigal son and said, watch this, watch this. Read the story of the prodigal son and say, oh my God, I am that son who came back home. I am that daughter who came back home. And nobody ever wants to be home. Nobody ever wants to be home. No, talk to me. Oh, the other brother. Nobody wants to be him. Nobody wants to be the workers who tell the son, go work in the field. Yeah. Everybody don't want to be the father. 
they take my oh go put <laughs> but watch this. Go get the fan cat. <laughs> I am that father. I am that mother. But check this out. Make somebody hurt you. Bring it real then. And make them say, um, can we talk about this? And I, what? From what you did? How dare you? You ain't throwing no purple robe on them. You ain't killing no fatted calf. You ain't you know what the fatted calf is? Giving them the best of your substance. Right. Yep. Right. You ain't saying, come to my house and sit at my table and I will let me bless you. No, you ain't doing that. But everybody wants to be the father. Everybody wants to be the good person. Oh, the son who comes back. I come back to the father. Break every chain. Break the law. Break every chain. Break, yes, break it. Break every chain. I was lost, but now I'm found. Break this chain. I was blind, but now I must break every chain. I come back home to the father. I come back home to the father. And, yeah, and, and, and people get so holy these days, they start, they twist their tongue. I come back home to the Father. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not even hallelujah anymore. It's hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, are we, are we even Hallelujah church now? <laughs> hallelujah. And they go like, they get real holy, you know, they go, hallelujah. And then when they go like, hallelujah. Oh God, but hypodermic needle just happened there. Hallelujah! And the son comes back home to the front. And then you go to them and say, hey sister, you know what? Um, can I talk to you about this? You know, you said this again to me. I did what? Yeah. It happens. I, I, but you're the same one who was saying hallelujah, right? <laughs> What happened to what happened to Shando and Kalalu? <laughs> what happened? You were Shando! Shando cut up the whatever this thing is. And then you go and you try. Was that tongues? Right? And they tell you tongues that you can understand these oh days. You know, they start like I just, I, cause I look at these things, I wonder. Oh God! I do contact, like, I, yeah, I need prayer for this. Yes. <laughs> I, when I hear people read the Bible, sometimes. Oh God! I'll be like, and they be like, you know, and they preach, they're preaching, they're forecasting, they're preaching. I, let me tell you, at the time of my life, I was. I was a prodigal son. And, and I, those people who pass the Samaritan right there. But I know the God in me. The God in me would will, will just, will just, will just allow me to go over. Shando. The God in me, Shando, would go over. And then, and then. I will bomb him up and I will give the money. And then you look at how much money they paid in tithes. And you're like, sister, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second here. How are you gonna help? How are you gonna help anybody when you don't you ain't gonna pay tithes? And if you pay, you pay, you pay ten dollars in tithes for 12 months, and I see you go to work every day. How you gonna help somebody off the street? You know, like Reverend Brown to pray for your message. I said, they don't want to mess with me. I love y'all, Jesus. Some of y'all in the house of the Lord. Oh, God, I'm crying. Oh, Lord. Am I lying? Shut up. Shut up. I see too many shandos. I'm here. Bring the shando there down. This is the truth. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, and, and that's why there is, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed. It, it's, it's a process. It grows. You're looking at it now. And people don't see it. 
And people think that it's, we become so, and it's true, people, we become so earthly holy that we, we know heavenly good, really. Earthly, like, we so holy down here, and then, and then we bypass everybody who needs help. I mean, it's crazy. I feel guilty when I pass somebody on the street and they're laying there stiff. Because truthfully, I don't know what that is. Because the times, truth, place the same mentality. But I ask God for you. I say, God, I know what this, I, I don't have the strength for this one. Let me tell you what I said, truthfully. Can I help you? I honestly say, God, I don't have the strength to do this one. But I don't say, send somebody else. I say, you probably made me pass this one, but God, I'm going to fail this test today. I failed it. I do. I say it. Because I understand my own limitations. I do. I do. But I don't pretend over it. I don't. Yeah. So... She, she keeping her job as a pastor's lead. Y'all get anything out of it tonight? Yes. 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 All right. Don't go home and tell your family, Shanto. <laughs> I know some preachers going to get that and be like, all right. I love y'all. It's a good learning lesson. Y'all got something out of it tonight, right? Absolutely. How many parables are there? Different? Six. 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 These parables will help you when you read. I urge you, when you're reading the parables, I urge you, take the time. Read from Luke chapter 10. Read the, the next four chapters. To 14. Yes. Um, 14, 15. Read as much between now and next week. And you will see the variances of parables. And then we'll continue parables next week. It will help you. Okay. All right, God bless you. We spoke about the six par different parables tonight. Um, some will tell you that there's between four to five parables. But the way I broke it down is to help you to see that within the parables, there's, there's this indirect conversation. That's what a parable really is. An indirect conversation that uh, is of a fictitious story to help one come to the truth. And then some parables have this moral um, backbone to it and to help you see that the issues that needs to be addressed. There are some parables that, already, that does not have a plot. There is, there is really no problem. Jesus is explaining an issue and he gives the answer. So there's really nothing to be addressed. It's just for you to think. And then there are some parables that help you to see that there is a plot. Where is he get? Because he wants you to think and he wants you to take action and he wants you to address the human side of us, such as the parable um, that we see in Luke chapter 10, verse 30, the parable of the Good Samaritan. But there's so many other parables that Jesus used as we looked at um, parables that are called similitude parables, simile, simile parables, where he spoke of. The kingdom of God is as. The king is as. And then as you read those parables, it will help you in your prayer life. It will help you how you deal with each other. It will help you in your, in your humanity and how you address your everyday issues. This is Bethel Tabernacle. We are at 90's Connected the Avenue. Our services are on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Tuesdays at 6.30 where we pray until 7. And 7 is our Bible study. And we ask you to go to our website, www.bethelltabernacleame.org, or on the Facebook or on our YouTube page, put in the same name, you'll see videos, and we urge you to be a supporter of us. You can go to Giveify and give. We ask you to please support this wonderful ministry. We're looking to do great things and stop by here. If you have never been here, we ask you to please stop by on a Sunday morning. And let me know that you saw us on Facebook. God bless you. We love you. Express that love of God to somebody. Remember, Jesus loves you. If you're not saved, if you're not saved, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. 
I believe you died. I believe that you were raised. And I believe you're seated at the right hand of the Father where you make intercessions for me. I believe that I'm saved right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that you're saved now. And we ask that you find some church in your local neighborhood. Find some church. Even this is a wonderful ministry that you can become a part of. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Bye-bye now.